Welcome to the Acuity Brands nConfig mobile app. The nConfig app allows for the wireless creation of zones and behaviors for your standalone NLight network using Bluetooth technology. Whether it's occupancy, daylighting, or setting trim levels, nConfig is a cost-effective method that simplifies programming and reduces startup times. The old way of doing configuration with push-button programming was extremely time-consuming and complex. We all know that time is money. Sensor view is used for more complex sequence of operations or a large number of devices. Now with nConfig, we have a faster and easier way of programming. This video explains the simple features and functionality available with the nConfig mobile app. For the nConfig app to work with your nLight equipment, a NeoBT must be part of the zone. The NeoBT translates the Bluetooth commands from your phone into nLight commands. The NeoBT can be added to any point within the nLight daisy chain, and it powers off of the nLight low voltage Cat5 bus. No additional wiring is necessary. The NeoBT includes a semi-clear plastic housing because it lights up blue when connected to the nConfig app. Start by downloading the nConfig mobile app from the Apple App or Google Play stores by searching for Acuity nConfig. There is no charge for the app. Once the app has downloaded, ensure that Bluetooth is enabled on the mobile device. If it is not enabled, you will be prompted to enable when opening the nConfig app. In this section of the video, we will detail the information you can find on the access point screen, demonstrate how to program and control nLight with the nConfig app, including behavior programming, trim level programming, photo sensor calibration and programming, scene programming, real-time control of the lighting zones. Please use the timestamps to skip ahead if you only need to view specific sections of the video. And lastly, we will show additional features of the nConfig app. When the nConfig app is opened, you will see a button at the bottom of the screen that says Scan for Points. Tap that button. The nConfig app will search for access points within Bluetooth low energy range of your phone. The nConfig app will display all access points available. Each access point will have five pieces of information available. Out of the box model name, NeoBT or customer name, and the serial ID. This is the unique 8-digit ID sticker on the NeoBT. Bluetooth Low Energy Signal Strength. The access points will order based on this signal strength. An X indicates a device that is out of range. Selecting Sort will reorder the list as signal strength changes. Number of NLight devices connected to the NeoBT. For quick identification, pressing any switch that is connected to a NeoBT will cause a light bulb to appear. Padlock. A closed padlock shows a NeoBT that will require a security pin when connecting. An open padlock will allow connection without a security pin. Refresh icon, as shown with circular arrows, indicates N-like devices are in the process of discovering each other. In order to connect to begin programming, select a NeoBT from the access points list. All devices connected to the NeoBT will now discover and populate a list on the overview page. Now we'll explain how to program and control nLight with the nConfig app. Select the behavior screen from the bottom options. Behavior programming is used to define the sequence of operation for the zone, or how the devices interact. It is programmed as a series of decisions, depending on the type of devices within the zone. When first navigating to the behavior programming screen, the current behavior of the zone will populate. Choose from On Off and Dimming by Switch, On by Occupancy Auto On or Vacancy Manual On, Off after 30 seconds to 20 minutes vacancy, default 10 minutes. This is commonly referred to as Occupancy Time Delay. Turn on to Previous Dim Level 100%, 99%, down to 1%. Dim after 15 seconds to 20 minutes vacancy. 
Default is seven minutes. Dual tech occupancy sensor sensitivity. Daylight harvesting by specific photosensor. See and config user guide for definitions with link. The behaviors option is used for simple changes or minor setting adjustments and saving the new behaviors. It's as simple as selecting the zone, select the behavior to adjust, and changing it to the desired setting. Click Save to finalize. Once the behaviors for that zone of devices has been finalized, create additional zones as necessary by selecting Add Zone. Behavior programming will require the same process as outlined above, after selecting the necessary devices to be in the zone. When adding devices to zones, it is important to note that occupancy sensors and photocells can typically only exist in a single zone. Once all zones have been created and appropriate behavior selected, select Save to push all new programming to the devices. A status bar similar to that shown above will display. After a successful save, the screen will appear as shown to the left. If the app fails to save the settings to one or more devices, an error will generate that allows the user to retry. Note if the zone continues to fail saving, please determine if you are out of range of the NeoBT or if devices have been disconnected or powered down. Return to the overview section by selecting the home icon in the top left corner of the app. Enter the trim level screen by selecting the trim level icon. At this point, you can toggle between individual and master screens. Selecting individual pulls the current value for each individual dimming device in the group and allows you to set each one independently. From this screen, you can identify each device, then use either the sliders or digital input boxes in keypad to enter the appropriate trim values. Once complete, select save. The lights will immediately adjust to the new trimmed level. Selecting Master is used to modify the trim levels of all the same dimming device types at once, such as 0 to 10 volt dimming or phase dimming devices. You can also use either the sliders or digital input boxes in keypad to enter the desired values. Once complete, select Save to adjust the trim on all like devices. Return to the overview screen by selecting the home icon in the top left corner of the app. Select Photo Sensor at the bottom of your screen. From this page, there are a few options and various live readings that can assist when programming photo sensors. Select Photo Sensor. This is a drop down menu that allows you to select the desired photo sensor you want to adjust. If there are multiple photo sensors in the group, select the appropriate one as the first step. If you were only looking to make minor adjustments to the photo sensor, the next step is the following. Use the up arrow, raise light level, and down arrow, lower light level, to make the desired adjustments to the photo sensor set point, which is the light level that photo sensor is attempting to maintain. If you want to make larger adjustments, specify a numerical value between the arrows by selecting a specific foot candle level. Tap the numerical value to expand the dropdown. Select a value, then press Done. Note this is the foot candle level at the sensor on the ceiling, not what is being seen on the work surface. Daylight Reading at Sensor This is live feedback of the light level the sensor is currently reading. The sensor will be constantly adjusting the fixture dim level in very small increments based on this value, attempting to match the daylight reading at sensor to the real-time adjustment value. Fixture Dim Level. This is live feedback for the dimming level the photo sensor is controlling the lights to. If at 1% or 100%, you have reached the low high limit of the photo sensor. If you find the fixture dim level is at 1% and you desire more light in the space, use the raise light level arrow and make the adjustments until you see this level begin to climb. Please wait a few seconds between each press of the arrow to allow the sensor dimming level to adjust since these are live running changes. If you are calibrating a sensor for the first time, auto calibrate. Selecting this feature runs the sensor through an auto calibration, 
which turns the lights off and on a series of times to determine the optimal light level for the space. Please note this could take up to 30 seconds to complete, and all app features will lock out during this time. Lights will turn off and on up to four times during the calibration. Photo sensor offset. If there is a need to create multiple daylighting zones based on a single photo sensor, this can be completed through the photo sensor offset page. Note that this option is available for selection only if the photo cell that has been specified is capable of dimming. Selecting this option will bring up a screen as shown. The available features are the following. Selected photo sensor. This identifies the photo sensor which was selected for adjustment on the adjust photo sensor page. Device list. This will be a list of all control devices such as power pack sand and light enabled fixtures within the same zone as the selected photo sensor. There is an identified light bulb icon for each device. The drop-down arrow to the right of each device sets the offset from the photo sensor. Selecting a positive value results in lights that are brighter than the photo sensor. Selecting match results in lights that match the photo sensor directly. Selecting a negative value results in lights that are dimmer than the photo sensor. Return to the overview screen by selecting the home icon in the top left corner of the app. Select scenes from the bottom right side of the overview screen to perform scene programming. If the button is showing in gray and the user is unable to select, this is the result of no scene capable devices connected to the access point. Upon entering the scenes page, the user will see a list of available scene devices. Selecting the arrow next to the device will reveal the following options. Copy scene settings from option, create edit scene, Play scene. Selecting the checkbox Copy Scene Settings From option enables the drop down selection with other available scene devices. This allows the user to program a single scene selector and copy programming from one to another. Next will be a list of all the scenes on each scene capable device. Selecting the arrow directly to the right of the scene will display a list of all available zones that were created through behaviors. To control all fixtures in the space with the scene, select the All Devices box and use the drop-down arrow to choose a value for the scene, off 1 to 100%. To control any subset of zones, pick one or more zones by checking the box next to the zone. Use the drop-down arrow to choose a value for the scene, off 1 to 100 percent. To the right of each scene there is also a play button displayed as an arrow within a circle. After scenes have been created and saved, this button allows the user to send the scene to the device's real time. This is used to see if the scene functions as desired. Return to the overview screen by selecting the home icon in the top left corner of the app. From the overview screen, tap on the control button. This will bring up a screen that provides real-time control of the lights within the connected access point. The zones window populates all zones that were created from the behaviors page. All zones allows control of all zones at the same time. Use the toggle button to turn lights on or off and use the drop down to adjust the dim level. You can also control each zone individually with the respective on-off toggle and dimming drop-down selector. Selecting the arrow next to the zone number will display a list of all control devices within that zone, with a light bulb icon used to identify each device. Return to the overview screen by selecting the home icon in the top left corner of the app. Additional features can be located by selecting the COG icon from the overview screen. Restoring all connected devices to factory out-of-the-box settings can be achieved from this menu. Note that bringing all devices to factory default settings will result in a loss of all behavior, photo sensor, trim level, and scene programming. There is no mechanism to recover previous programming. After selecting Restore Device Default Settings, a status bar will display and indicate once complete. 
Also available in the COG menu is the security pin for the NeoBT. Each time a user connects to the NeoBT with a pin, as shown by a locked padlock on the access points screen, they will be prompted for this pin. After entering the correct pin, the user now has access to the programming configurations of the group. The user can adjust the security pin after connecting to the access point. From any screen, select the COG icon in the top right corner, and then select Change Access Point Security Pin. This screen provides a numeric text box where the user can adjust the pin and save, or cancel if they would prefer the pin as is. This security pin requires a minimum of four numbers and allows a maximum of eight numbers. Note that a pin is not required for the NeoBT device, but it is highly recommended, especially in an environment where the NeoBT device is left within the NLight zone. Click the COG button at the top right of the screen. Then select the Edit Device Labels to name your devices. Inside the open field, you can provide a custom name for each device for ease of identification throughout the app. Click Save to complete the naming process. The last item on the COG menu is Support and Settings for the nconfig application. The support section contains Technical support line for nconfig nlight website Technical support email for nconfig A link to the nconfig user guide Please download the nconfig app from the Apple iTunes Store or the Google Play Store. Thank you for joining the video session on the nconfig app. View more information on our website.